Hey. Hey. How's, hey. It, how's it going? It's good. It's great. Great to be here. It was nice to hear you describe the succession theme as a banger. Oh, it's a banger. It's an absolute <laughs> banger. Fat, fat tune. I love that song. It's I a, love listening to it. It's a bop. Let's be honest. It's a bop. Yeah. I saw you on the, uh, I was watching the Raptors game last night. Yeah, yeah. And then who shows up on my screen? I was up there on the old Jumbotron. How was that? Yeah. I didn't know. Are you a Raptors fan? Um, I, I'm a basketball fan. Right. So, so they offered me tickets to go to the game, and I was very excited to go and, and watch those guys. I mean, they're just some of the best. I'm, yeah, big Siakam fan and Kyle Lowry and all these, you know, big fan. Is it a, was it a bit of a trip that you're in this, like, on the show like this now, that you're in this moment where you are, you go to these, you know, basketball games, you end up on the Jumbotron in a country that's not yours? Yeah, um, I it's a pretty we- yeah it's a pretty weird thing. Uh, you're like, do I just look into this camera, which then projects into this room of many, many, many people, or do I? I don't. You don't really know what to do. But um, but it's you know, this show's been amazing. I feel like very lucky to to go around and talk about it and be a part of it and yeah you, you could do the thing where you like talk to your friend next to you and like not really kind of ignore the jumbotron you know and yeah my brother was right there i should have just like yeah acted as if there wasn't just kind of wave yeah, yeah. oh yeah yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey, i'm going? busy in a conversation yeah. but uh oh yeah hello to everyone yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, can we just can we just set this up for everybody so cousin greg sort of <clears throat> stumbles into the show's main plot which is the family battle to succeed the aging patriarch logan roy uh cousin greg not like the other roys for people who haven't seen the show where does he fit in Cousin Greg, um, he is the nephew of Logan, who's who's this the patriarch. Uh, the he's the grand Greg. Greg is the grandson of Logan's brother, and they're actually Canadian. They're from the Canadian side of the family, like the farming side. Um, I guess the family owned a, a paper business when they were younger, and Logan took the paper business and. My grandpa, my character's grandpa, took the the farming side, and we kind of got the short stick. Um, Logan became a billionaire, and we became maybe like hundred millionaires. Right? Um, Come on, you know, like give, give me a break. We really got shafted. Right. <laughs> um, so Greg, Greg, the pilot of the first season starts, and Greg is trying to get into the corporate world by being a mascot at the amusement park. Uh, that is the Waystar Royco amusement park, and. Uh, gets too high and uh, ends up throwing up through the eye holes of his costume. And uh, his mother's basically like, look, this is your chance to get in. Go to your uncle's birthday, Uncle Logan's birthday, and uh, make an impression and get your job back. And I go there, and I think the sort of spoils of of it all are very enticing and very exciting, and, um, and I want more than just my mascot job back. And so... I start to maneuver yeah. in that first episode, and it continues from there. So I want to play a clip from Succession that sort of um, shows off this maneuvering, but sort of this awkward maneuvering. Take a listen to this. I'm not bringing this up as any form of threat, but... So you know when you had me destroy those documents at Cruises? No. Well, I, I kept it... I kept a few of them just in case I got in trouble and because I was worried that maybe I was destroying evidence of criminality. Did you know? So, like, I don't know. Would it be... I don't want to bring anything up to you in a way that feels like horrible, but would it be bad for me to, like, mention those to you now? Are you asking if you can blackmail me? No, I'm not. I, I, would, I, I would hate that. I like you. It's just, you know, context. Very well. I accept your blackmail. I accept your blackmail. That's uh, Cousin Greg. Uh, Nicholas Braun is with me in the studio. He plays Cousin Greg, uh, awkwardly blackmailing Tom. But is there an argument to be made that, like, Greg is the only good person on the show? I mean, these are such hateable characters, these sort of billionaires, and Greg sort of comes in from a middle class or, like I said, a hundred millionaire class background. And you Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think he, yeah, he comes from a more modest upbringing than the kids, mm-hmm. you know, than the main children of, of Logan. So... I think he doesn't come from like a cutthroat mentality. Um, y- you know, he's he he wasn't like learning how to be greedy and learning how to make deals as a kid. You know, so um, so he comes in naive, um, but he's highly ambitious too. So he's sort of, I think his, I think Logan senses that in him and sort of like prods it. Yeah, and you know, and and 
and as the series goes on, I think he slowly loses that moral center. But I, I often wonder whether he's like a stand-in for the audience, because I think when I, when I would watch the show, I would think, uh, and but by the way, I, I sort of embarrassingly disclosed to Nick before we started that I watched the whole thing in like four days. And by the way, you can watch the whole thing in like four days. Yeah, how did that feel? In, it felt, you know, creatively exhilarating, uh-huh. uh, physically not great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You know, I was it's... kind of tired by the end of it and probably ate too many chips. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, yeah, you're eating chips the whole time. Okay, that's not not healthy, man. <laughs> no, it's um, not. Should have switched to hummus. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah, some carrots or something. No. Um, yeah, but uh, but yeah, I guess you can you can watch it very quickly because there's something kind of. I mean, to me, like when I watch some of the episodes, they're like kind of sickening. But, but at the end, you're like, but I gotta see where that goes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm glad. But, but yeah. it's also just so unlikely, you know. It's so it's so unlikely these days that there seems to be a show that everyone can sort of agree on that everyone seems to be watching again. When did when did you start to know that this show had become something special? Because you've been an actor for a while. You've been working for a while. Yeah, yeah, I have. Um, I think, well, we didn't really know what it was the first couple episodes. I don't think. I mean, maybe maybe other people did. And Je- Jesse, our writer, is this brilliant guy um, and has been writing for a long time. And it has it mixes genres and tones and humor into all the things he does. But I think I think when we did, you know, we shot the pilot, we all thought, thought it was good. I think we had a good time making it. And then as we read episodes two and three and four, and you're doing table reads, and it's like really funny. Like we're yeah. making an hour-long drama for HBO. Yeah. You know, it should f- feel he- heavy, and sometimes it really did. Um, but then it was really hilarious in these table reads, and we're like, "Are we making a comedy?" And me and Matthew McFadden, who plays Tom, we're like, "Are we? Are we?" Or I, mean, I don't. I can't speak for him, but I was like, "Am I ruining the drama part of this? Because this <laughs> stuff feels funny, and like people are laughing, and maybe we should go for that." Um, I, I, I want to play something because um, it's a bit of a trip talking to you right now, just because I've watched the show so much. I, yeah, I want to yeah. play this clip from your interview on uh, Stephen Colbert's show. Okay. We had uh, one of your uh, co-stars, um, uh, Nicholas Braun, yes. who plays Cousin Egg, Greg the Egg, last Greg the week. Egg. Yes. He seemed a lot like his character. He is. Very sweet, very sweet. Very nice. Very nice. I, I had real confusion because l- the first season, I used to call him Greg because I got his name wrong, but that was part of the script. Sure. The second season, I kept calling him Nick <laughs> when I should have been calling him Gre- Greg. And uh, they said... No, Brian, it's Greg, not Nick. I said, well, he's so like the character, I can't tell the difference. (laughs) So that's the Scottish actor Brian Cox who plays Logan Roy, sort of the aging, multi-billionaire patriarch on Succession. Um, I'm here with Nicholas Braun from Succession. And he says something there that I have to admit that I'm sort of feeling right now. Oh, wow. Which is that you, you seem very similar to your character. Are you very similar to your character? I have, there's a lot of similarities, I think. Yeah, I, I mean... Um, I, I, I try to put a lot of myself into this guy and, um, you know, he, he's uncomfortable in this world when, when the show s- starts. And I think as it's going on, he's getting more comfortable or getting a little bit more like solid in himself and in these rooms and learning how to operate a little bit better and blackmail, you know, blackmailing, even though that's sort of reluctantly blackmailing. Um, but I, I like to put a lot of my own awkwardness and my own uh things into into greg and i that feels really good to me because i think that's what's interesting about him is that he's like the most sort of vulnerable in this you know everybody else is kind of cold and they kind of shut down emotions and they can't show this or that to each other or else they'll get you know they'll get made fun of Mm. or or, or Logan will, you know, remove them from their position in the company or something if they show too many emotions. Um, and Greg, I, I think my take on Greg is that it's fun. It's fun to watch him feel all of the stuff that he feels in these places and like gets excited about getting flown to Hungary. Mm-hmm. You know, for, in, in this season we fly to Hungary. You know, or. or any of those things. So the stuff that they take for granted, you can see you getting very excited about. And that's the thing yeah. I kind of see myself. We kind of see the audience in it, right? We see ourselves like, well, we'd be pretty excited to be flown to Hungary and to, you know, to eat a eat a bird. 
yeah. you know, with, with a blanket over our head. You know, these things would all be very exciting. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, have you found yourself like this is such a world of like high finance and, you know, it's kind of billionaire class and something that we kind of read about in the news and something that we know about from television and stuff like that. But now that you've sort of portrayed members of that class, have you found yourself being welcomed into it? Have you found yourself being invited places? Have you found yourself, you know, people reaching out because they think you're part of that world? Um, I mean, I, yeah, I guess, I guess so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it kind of opens up, it's kind of opened up some, some, some fun, uh, hangs. Like what? Uh, I don't know. I, 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 I told the story on Colbert when, when I went on, but, but I, you know, I got to meet the Clintons at a party and. Both of them? Yeah, both of them. Oh, and, wow. You know, kind of How was that? chatted up with them. I mean, it, uh, pretty awesome. Pretty, pretty awesome. Bill is like such a charismatic man, and um, and and Hillary too. You know, I I voted for Hillary, so I was I was very excited to meet her. And did, and you, did you tell her? I don't think I did tell her. Hmm. Yeah, hmm. it'd be a weird thing to say, wouldn't it? Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, I was. I wasn't my opener. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> You got my vote. Uh, so, sorry, so, sorry that happened. Uh, are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> have, have you? Actually, yeah. But there's this whole. I mean, this whole theory, and I, and I guess I have to call it a theory for legal reasons that the that, that the Roy family, given they're the immediate tycoons with you know an aging leader from an, another country other than the United States, and there's a power grab between the siblings about who's going to take over. Everyone thinks about the Murdochs, right? Everyone mm-hmm. thinks about the Murdochs. The Murdochs, of course, famously from uh, you know a powerful media family, Fox News and the Wall Street Journal and the Times in London. Like, were you were you that aware? of the Murdochs before you took this on? No, not really. Not really. I mean, I, I you know, I saw a lot of those headlines about like the, the you know, phone phone scandal and and all that stuff, but I didn't really follow it. And I don't follow that much of the news and and all that sort of stuff. So I didn't, yeah, I didn't know what was, what was the deal with the, with the Murdochs. Have, have any of them reached out? Not to me, no. But I, I, I hear some of them have watched it. Um, uh, we hear little things, you know. The the cast like sort of gets little whiffs of stuff, like oh, Elizabeth Murdoch's seen it, or you know, is there a cousin? It, is there a cousin know? Greg in the Murdoch family? Um, I don't know. The, uh, I looked up. I looked up the Murdochs when I when we first when I first got the part. Um, and there was some guy I can't remember his name, but he just looked like a cousin Greg, and he was in a bunch of photos, and he was just sort of like, it's like his suits didn't quite fit, and his hair was not great, and he looked like he was trying to lean into pictures with people. Right. Like he wasn't immediately included in that picture, but he sort of got his way in. Yeah. And I felt like that's the Greg. I don't know. Maybe he's just some guy that is around, but, but, uh, photo bombing the Murdoch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, showing up. He's, yeah, he's doing a good job being around. You said you weren't a gigantic news you know, junkie before you took this job on, but I have to imagine that, you know, being in a show that's sort of about the manipulation of news, and I should point out that for people who haven't watched the show, the Roy family owns sort of a, a media conglomerate, and a lot of the conversation on the show is about, you know, how they might twist the news for political means or for business means. Has being in this show changed the way you watch the news or consume media? Um, I guess I guess I read things sometimes and I'm like, oh, that could be a succession storyline, or that is what we just shot, you know, or, or just came out um, on our show. So, so there, there is, uh, yeah, I, I guess I am sort of sensing it. Like, like there was a, um, this isn't exactly news, but in New York we have these these like electronic billboards, mm-hmm. and there was something on there that was that was like, President Trump tries to shut down biography. Uh, you know, someone writing a biography. That's a bad paraphrasing, but that's what it, what he was doing. And that's some, that was a storyline that we were already shooting in succession, where Logan is trying to shut down a woman in season two who's trying to write his biography. Um, and Greg has started to talk to her yeah. a little bit. Um, and so, yeah, it's stuff like that. I guess I'm, I just have a more of a keen awareness of of how the media, you know, these big families are using the media or how Trump's using the media. Um, so, yeah, there's there, there's definitely a, a bit of that. If you're just tuning in, I'm speaking with Nicholas Braun. You might know him as Cousin Greg from HBO's show Succession. Uh, speaking of bangers, take a listen to this. And the more I work, the farther I fall down And it's only just another day now 
Why can't I see clear? Why can't I breathe? Why can't I see clear? Why can't I breathe? And the more I Okay, so Nick, what are we hearing? Wow, I cannot believe you just played that song. What is it? Oh my god. Dude, that's so cool that you just played that. This is a song that I made um, a couple years ago when I hid it in my computer and I never put it out. And then one courageous night, like maybe six months ago or something, I was like, I'm just going to put this on my SoundCloud and see if anybody likes it. And uh, it's one of my favorite things I made. Um, I made it with a little like dr drum, electronic drum machine. This part's my favorite part. Turn up. It sounds good. It's called No Delay. Was music the plan for you before acting? Um, yeah, I've always loved making music. I, I, I yeah, I, I sang as I as I was a kid. You know, as I was a, I was a kid, I sang in my school choirs, and then I sang in a cappella in high school. And um, I've loved making music. I love writing songs. I love p playing piano. I can't read music, but I like playing. And so all the songs I make are just sort of finding chords and notes that sound good to me and feel like a like I can write a melody over mm -hmm. them. Um, and so, and, and me and my brother made some songs for a bit and we're starting to make music again. And it's something that I, I think about all the time, but I just don't have time for it. And, I, and you know, now I'm on this show and I'm acting and, and, and working a lot, but I love to make music and, uh, yeah, so I, I'm hoping to get back to it more now that we have a few months off. I, I also hear you're a big fan of Canadian Canadian music. I hear you like like Andy oh, Schaaf. Oh, I hear Schaaf, you like yeah. and you like Daniel Caesar and you like yeah, Canadian yeah. artists. I actually didn't know Daniel Caesar was Canadian. Oshawa, Ontario. Awesome. Yeah, I love Daniel Caesar. I love Andy Schaaf. I think Andy Schaaf makes such beautiful. Uh, his lyrics are some of the some of the best lyrics. I love how he performs. He sings with such like amazing intent. I don't know if you've seen him perform live. Yeah, he's I, like, I saw him at a church last year. It's incredible. Yeah, he's yeah. so good. I mean, he didn't know I was there, but I saw him at a church. But chances are he, was, he looked you directly in the eyes because yeah. that's the way he performs. <laughs> I was going to say, he wasn't performing. He was just at church. Yeah, yeah, yeah all right. 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 He's yeah. from Bean Fate, Saskatchewan. Yeah, deep out there apparently, right? A really small town. Yeah. Shout out, if you're listening to this in Bean Fate right now, uh, congrats on your favorite son, Andy Schaff. Yeah, on your, on your man. He's doing great. So before you go, um, who do you think's I, I gotta ask this, like you know, the end. I, I can't spoil the end of season two. I think the the last episode of season two is one of my favorite television episodes of all time. Thank you. But you know, who who are you thinking is going to win this thing? Who are you think is going to win the Succession Game of Thrones? Like, do you have any predictions? I I don't. I, yeah, I don't. I, don't I see have... a laser kind of pointed at your head right now. Yeah, yeah, right. Question. Yeah. Um, no, because 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 our showrunner is so smart. He's gonna he's gonna make this a real dance for for a while. So, um, so he knows how to how to craft it. But I mean, uh, the all three of I liked what they did with Kieran Culkin's character towards the end of the season, especially the last two episodes. Um, without saying too much, he just he you see some different sides of him that make him more of a contender, um, and. I mean, I'd like to see Greg, you know, like take some big swings uh, at some point, which he's starting to too at the end of that season. Um, but I don't know who's going to get the get the gold. Has Has Karen's brother Macaulay Culkin ever been to the set? He's never been. I've never met him. Never met him? No, I've oh. never met Mac. I would I've, Mac. He, yeah, he goes by. <laughs> Karen calls him Mac, so we hear about Mac, but we but I've never met him. He's, yeah. Oh, uh, cool. Oh, your brother. Your brother's here. My brother's here. Hey, how's yeah. It going? What's his name? Did you hear the music? Oh, nice. What's it, What's your brother's name? That's Chris. Hey, Chris, how are you? Chris is out there uh, waving at us. And uh, Chris was at the Raptors game with you last night. Nick, it was nice to meet you. It was great to meet you. Yeah, this was so fun, man. 